just two comparable biographies, it doesn't mean anything. There are many such similar biographies in history, and it is quite clear that we should not draw any chronological conclusions from this. To calculate how close to each other two dynasties, Anatoly Fomenko developed a special coefficient. It is used for comparison of each pair of questionnaire codes. For greater clarity of comparison of flows of questionnaire codes can be represented graphically. Let's mark horizontally the serial number of each chosen by us ruler of the first dynasty and vertically time of his board in years. Fomenko calls it a profile of a dynasty. Such profile can be constructed for any ruling sort and it will be peculiar only to it. On this profile it will always be possible to identify it. Let's build a similar graph for the second dynasty. Now the obtained graphs can be compared. If profiles of two dynasties differ little from each other, it means they represent one and the same real dynasty. This Fomenko method is based on the principle of small distortions. The mathematician calculated that the chroniclers, although sometimes mistaken in the duration of the reign of the Tsars, but still very slightly. Consequently, the profiles derived from chronicles can be considered highly individualized. From birth, each person has traits that distinguish him from all other people on the planet. Distinguishing them not only from their contemporaries, but also from those who have lived or will live. How to determine whether the same person is depicted in the three photos, or whether they are completely different. People, names are different, biographies are different, documents are also different, external similarities, but the appearance can be changed. Dye hair, glue mustache and beard, do plastic surgery at last. But DNA and fingerprints cannot be changed. They are individual and unique. Therefore, having a sufficient database, it is always possible to find out what kind of person hides behind a new appearance and a new name. The profile of a dynasty calculated by mathematicians is like a person's fingerprints or DNA. And if suddenly a new, supposedly unknown dynasty is found in some historical document, you just have to recreate its profile and compare it with profiles from the database. This graph shows the profiles of two ruling dynasties of the ancient kingdom of Judea 6th to modern century BC and the Eastern Roman Empire for 7 centuries AD. And these are profiles of ruling dynasties of the medieval Holy Roman Empire of X to 30th centuries and the medieval Habsburg Empire of 13th and 17th centuries. If you place these profiles on opposite sides of the axis, they are almost symmetrical. What do you get? Do they belong to the same dynasty? The visual similarity must be verified. To do this, we need to calculate the probability of coincidence of these pairs of dynasties. Turns out, it's negligible. There is about one chance in a hundred billion that at different times in different countries lived in different dynasties of kings, similar to each other, like two drops of water. There are quite a few such dynastic twins in official history. Pairs of dynasties have been discovered that are now considered completely different, that ruled in different countries, in different eras. Say, one dynasty ruled in ancient Rome the second in medieval Europe. However, our method unexpectedly showed that the timetables of the reigns of these dynasties are strikingly similar, as close as knowingly dependent pairs of dynasties. Such pairs we call duplicates phantoms. There seem to be quite a few of them, a few dozen. That's how this method showed that some ruling dynasties were simply multiplied in history, multiplied solely on paper. How could this happen? Most likely for two reasons. Firstly, 
Mistakes could have occurred due to the underdevelopment of science at that time. For example, ancient documents described one and the same dynasty, and the interpreters of these texts decided that they were talking about completely different rulers. Therefore, they gave them new names and transferred them not only to other countries, but also to other epochs. Secondly, and this is the main reason, such errors occurred deliberately. It was important for some powerful forces of the Middle Ages to rewrite history, hiding something very important for their descendants and other nations. About it we will speak in detail in the following movies. The discovered duplicates of dynasties of rulers lead to new reflections. Probably, not all extant annals describe events in the chronological order in which they actually occurred. The chronicler, describing events, necessarily mentions czars and significant people of his epoch. It is their character and deeds that interest him most of all. Chronicler is very important that nothing is confused, and for this he tries to describe his heroes as accurately as possible. Each person is a separate name. These are the names of historical characters and are the best guide when analyzing the text. A person's personal diary can tell a lot about its master. Here, for example, are the notes of the boy Petya. He went to school and was friends with Vanya and Masha. The names of Vanya and Masha are found literally on every page, and not once. Gradually, there are fewer and fewer records about them, and it is clear why. Petya graduated from school and entered the institute. He has a different life and new friends. With Vanya and Masha, he sees much less often, and towards the end of the notebook, their names disappear altogether. And this is also understandable. Petya has graduated from the institute, started working, has a family, and is no longer interested in his school friends. The same logic is true for chronicles. Each new generation gives birth to new heroes. Therefore, the chronicler, moving from the description of one generation to another, changes the characters of the narrative. This simple principle was useful for creating a method of dating. To check whether the chronological order of events in the chronicle is not broken, let's build a graph. Horizontally, we will mark the sequence of parts of the text vertically. The number of all messages about all historical personalities first mentioned in some part of the chronicle. If the events are described in the correct chronological order, the curve on the graph will decrease and look like this. Such a graph can be constructed for each part of the annals and for each character mentioned in it. Anatoly Fomenko called this principle the principle of attenuation of frequencies, and the method based on this principle, the method of ordering chronological texts in time. Repeatedly checked on historical documents of the 17th, 20th centuries, it was completely confirmed. So the history of this time is really as everyone knows it. But it is worth turning to earlier annals, and incredible things begin. Graphs of ancient chronicles plotted using Fomenko's method. Very often, instead of a decreasing curve, they give a broken line with unexpected spikes. That is, the names of long-forgotten historical characters appear with the former purity. And this is not historical nonsense. These are parts of the annals, transferred from the present to the past. If you put them back in their place, the graph of the text will take the right form, a curve going downward. If the last pages of Petya's diary tell only about long-forgotten school friends, what can it mean? Has Petya suddenly forgotten everyone around him? He no longer communicates with his institute buddies and co-workers, does not make new acquaintances, and in his life there are only Vanya and Masha? It's hard to believe it. Most likely, this page simply fell out of the beginning of the diary and accidentally fell into the end of the notebook. 
The examples we have described clearly show how the pages of human history are mixed up. The chronology of this history is not just broken somewhere. As it turns out, it requires a complete and careful revision. What should be done to see all the contradictions of the generally accepted historical version? Maybe it is necessary to make a global chronological map of all traditional history. At first glance it seems to be impossible, but nevertheless this task turned out to be feasible. Anatoly Timofeyevich Fomenko decided to understand how the world history really looks like. To do this, he did a tremendous amount of work, studied hundreds of ancient texts, tables, annals, chronicles, analyzed the ancient and medieval history of Europe, Egypt, the Middle East, the Mediterranean. He studied most of the documents that describe the major events of human history that took place over 6,000 years, from 4,000 years BC to 1,900 years AD. To present all this information visually, Anatoly Fomenko compiled a document that had no analog in which there was not yet. The scientist worked on it for six years. All the collected information he depicted in the form of a large chronological scale stretched along the horizontal axis of time. On it were indicated exactly those dates on which the founders of the traditional historical version of Scaliger and Petarius insisted. The map was first displayed on millimeter paper, then it was scanned and the image was transferred to a special material. This unique document is striking in its size. The length of the map is 19 meters. So for the first time, a graphic representation of history was created, which is studied in schools and universities. On these maps were distributed tens of thousands of names, many thousands of dates, Information about the troubles, the major books, the primary sources, the chronicles, the big dates, the authors of the chronicles, the chroniclers, the astronomers, and so on. Then to this material were applied the methods developed by me and my colleagues about which I spoke briefly. And I marked duplicates on this map, that is those epochs that turned out to be close similar, dependent, according to these methods. This was done. Anatoly Fomenko divided the entire world history into epochs. Then each epoch was mapped in detail on the time axis. Events that occurred simultaneously in different states were depicted on top of each other. To show how many in traditional history there are repetitions of historical events, different time intervals for Menko assigned different letters. For example, the era of the Second Roman Empire was labeled with the letter K. The same letter marked all its duplicates, which Fomenko discovered with the help of his methods. Other historical epochs, as well as their duplicates, were designated by other letters, for example, C and P, and were also marked on the map. Thus, a structure emerged that showed how the repetitions of historical events were arranged on the time axis. This map was called the Global Chronological Map. It is the one that shows what the true chronology of historical events should be. It became apparent that there were three major time shifts in traditional history about 300, 1000, and 1800 years. And many of the real historical events of the Middle Ages were on paper, reproduced by medieval chroniclers and sent back in time. How could this happen if the chroniclers of the Middle Ages